we move on to circles. A circle can be defined differently. It is a locus of a point moving in a plane at a fixed distance from another point. Of course, your pair of compasses, that is what gives me the idea of the definition. If I want to draw a circle, I have a fixed point fixed onto my what? Onto the plane of my paper. And then I open it to a particular radius. And then I move it like that to draw a circle. The path traced out by that moving point is what we refer to as a locus. So the locus of a point, OK, with a fixed distance away from another fixed point, gives me what I refer to as a locus. And the distance between the fixed point and then the path traced out is known as the radius. And any line drawn from any point on the path traced out through the center or through the fixed point is what we refer to as what? As a diameter. This is a circle. Yes. If I pick this point as the center, all right, then this is my radius. O, E. Of course, it will be equal to this. Never mind. I'm not a computer. But this, just consider it as a perfect circle. So this is also a what? This is also a radius. All right. So, if I pick a point on the path trace out, draw a line passing through the center onto another point on the path trace out, then that is BOD. That line is what I refer to as the diameter. Diameter. OK. Now, from there, let me also define this. See. The entire path traced out is known as the circumference. 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 And O is the center of the circle. Center of the circle. OK? Now, I can draw this. This is a chord. A chord. If this is D, no, E, line D, E is a chord. A chord. And the path of the circle cut off by the chord is known as the arc. This is, could be referred to as a minor arc. Minor arc, while this, the whole of this, is referred to as the major arc. Major arc. So we have major arc, just as the minor arc. All right. Then, we have these also which we refer to as a segment. Segment. This is minor segment. And the whole of this is known as 
the major segment. Major segment. Now, I hope this is very clear. So we now go into, we look into some of the theories guarding or hinges on the circle. When we have a circle, This is a circle. If we call this arc, arc A, B, that is arc A, B. And this is the chord A, B. This is the chord A, B. And this is the center. Good. The center is denoted by O. The chord carries or subtains an angle theta. Let's consider a line bisecting angle theta or bisecting chord a, B. We know this is R. And we know this is the height from the center of the circle up to the chord. Definitely, this height divides the angle there into two halves. And so if we consider these as theta 1 and this is theta 2, we can estimate the value of each of the theta using trigonometrical ratio. Here, we have the height being adjacent to this angle. R, which is the radius, to be the hypotenuse of the line OC, I mean, hypotenuse of the right angle triangle OCB. From the trigonometry, we have this. H over R to give us cosine theta 1. And so our H could be determined R cosine theta 1. All right? Not only that, we have determined what H is if R is known and if theta 1 is known. But over here, what if we are given the H, we are given the R, and we are told to determine the angles obtained by the arc, I mean, uh, called AB? How do we go about that? So suppose we are to determine, we are to determine the angle subtends by the chord. at the center O. Oh. This is a way to go about it. Under this condition, H may be known, R may be known, 
AB may be known is only the angle that we are looking for. Okay. Under that condition, what exactly do we do? This is how to go about it. See, here we have H over R being equal to sine, I mean, cosine theta 1. All right? Okay. So, that means that arc cosine H over R we give me the theta 1. My theta, but theta is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay. So over here, in the same way, this is also R. H over R again, and this side gives me cosine equals cosine theta 2. And so, my theta 2 is equal to arc cosine H over R. And therefore, theta 2 is equal to arc cosine h over r. And therefore, my theta equals theta 1 plus theta 2. And it is equal to 2 theta 1 or 2 theta 2 since they are equal. And therefore, this become twice arc cosine h over r. That gives me the value of the theta at the center. And of course, with this idea, we can find the length AB. We can also find, if it is unknown, we can also find H. We can find R. That is all about the what? The chord. Now, let's go on. Looking at some of the theorem. The first one we look into is <coughs> The arc subtending an angle at the center of the circle Still, this is the center. The theorem, the theorem says angle subtends by an arc at the center of the circle at the center of a circle is twice that which is subtended 
on the circumference. That's what, is, what the theorem says. And so, we go like this. Okay, meaning that if I have theta here, whatever is here is half theta. So also at any, any point, any point on the circumference, see, this becomes half theta, this is also what? Half theta. That is what the theorem says. Angle subtains by an arc at the center. This is the arc subtending these at the center of the circle. This very angle theta is doubled twice angles obtained on the circumference. That is what the uh, <coughs> theorem says. Okay. So that is one. There is Another theorem, which I know most students always get confused on this. This is what you should note very, very, very well. Okay. Needless, we prove. Okay. But just note this wherever you are in a problem. You should note Please, this is the angle at the center being subtended by this what? By this minor arc. This very arc also, this major arc, also subtends an angle at the center. Which angle is that subtending? It is this the rule of these, that it subtains at the center. So this particular big second, I mean, uh, arc could be said to subtain an angle of such on the circumference. So you could have this. If, so if this is beta, beta, then what we have here is half a beta, half a beta, okay? So we have this major arc. The major arc subtends angle beta at the center, at the center there. Let me differentiate it by using double line, okay, this major arc subtains, cool only subtains angles on this part of the circumference, which is on the minor arc. So if this angle subtended at the center is beta, then the angle subtends on the circumference is half a beta. That is what we should not see. And when solving problems, or when a problem is given to us, what we should realize is that the paper on which the questions are are not fixed. You can turn it. So over here, 
if the angle subtended by the major arc is beta, then the angle it subtends on the circumference is equal to what? Half the beta. Now, note one thing. It means that angle at C, D, E are equal. Half a theta, half a theta, half a theta. So also, angle at F, G are also equal to each other. But look at one thing. One thing you can consider is this. Is another theorem. Angle on the opposite segment are supplementary. Meaning that this angle here and that angle there add up to 180. And this is simple. It can be proved. It can be shown. If theta and beta are angled at a point, which is 360, and we are saying that any other one subtended at the circumference is half of it. Half of 360 is 180. Therefore, we should just think it out. We should realize that the sum of theta and beta is 360 because they are angry form angle at a point. So if you are now saying that any angle subtended by the same arc on the circumference, then it should be half of either beta or that of the theta. If that is the case, then we can also push further that angle in opposite segment, this is a major segment, this is a minor segment, if they are on the same chord, then of course, and they are on the circumference, the two of them are supplementary, meaning that the sum is 180 degrees. I hope this is well understood. And we can apply it to our day-to-day -day problem in problems in circle. Thank you so much.